Welcome to the State of Wisconsin Department of Agriculture Trade and Consumer Protections training video for safeguards for public pools to prevent chemical release events. This video demonstrates the proper safeguards that are a part of a public pool circulation system to prevent a chemical release and the steps required to verify the proper operation of the safeguards. Under Wisconsin law, the Wisconsin Department of Agriculture Trade and Consumer Protection, referred to as DATCAP, is responsible for regulating public pools and water attractions in order to protect the health and safety of the public. A DATCAP inspector checks the public pools for safe water chemistry and proper safety equipment. A chemical release is an event caused by the introduction of a hazardous liquid or gas into the pool or water attraction area. It is usually caused by a mixture of chlorine and acid, which creates a toxic and deadly gas. Without proper safeguards, a chemical release can occur when the pool's circulation system has a loss of water flow and the chlorine and acid feeders continue to feed chemicals into the plumbing of the circulation system. The buildup of the mixed chemicals that creates a gas is then quickly introduced into the pool when the flow of water resumes. There are several ways a chemical release could happen. Possible causes for a chemical release include accidental mixing of chemicals from spilled storage containers, deliberate mixing of chemicals, hand feeding chemicals into the pool basin, adding the improper amount of chemicals, improper backwashing, and back siphoning of chemicals. The focus of this video is when a chemical feeder continues to feed chlorine and acid into the circulation system when the water circulation has stopped. In 2016, the Centers for Disease Control helped Wisconsin staff to analyze the death injury illness reporting form data to determine the scope of injuries and illnesses that have occurred in Wisconsin pools from 2008 to 2015. Of the 464 documented reports, 233 were relating to chemical releases, resulting in chemical releases accounting for a little over half of all injuries in Wisconsin. If someone is exposed to a chemical release, it can lead to short-term or permanent long-term health effects, and in some cases, death. The amount of chemicals and how long a person is exposed determines the severity. Exposure to a large quantity of chemicals can cause serious health effects and include symptoms of burning and irritation to the skin, eyes, nose, throat, and lungs. It can also cause coughing, wheezing, vomiting, dizziness, headache, and fainting. There are three steps that take place during a chemical release. The first is the loss of water or a significant decrease in water flow of the circulation system. This can occur in two ways. It can happen when either the power to the pump is lost or the pump has lost prime. The loss of power to the pump can be caused by a short circuit, power failure or outage, an operator shuts down the system, or mechanical damage to the pump or electrical system. The other way water flow could be lost is the loss of prime to the pump. This can happen when air is introduced into the circulation system from the skimmers or by damaged gaskets or loose fittings of the circulation pump basket lid. Loss of prime can also be caused by damage or corroded pump impeller and cannot produce adequate water flow. When either of these events occur, the water flow is lost or significantly decreased and is no longer recirculating through the system to consistently distribute the chemicals safely into the system. Even though the water flow was lost and a pump has no power, the automatic chemical feeder still has the potential to continue to operate and introduce chemicals into the circulation system. An automatic feeder, like the peristaltic pump pictured on the left, injects chlorine or acid into the water of the pool's circulation system with the use of injection points, which are pictured on the right. When the chlorine and acid mix, they form chlorine gas in the plumbing, which can either escape into the immediate pool pump room if there is a leak in the plumbing, or the gas will build up within the return line of the circulation system and be introduced back into the pool basin and enclosure. When the power to the pump or the flow of water resumes, 
The chemicals are quickly pushed out to the pool basin through the inlets and the chlorine gas is dispersed within the pool enclosure. Any patrons within the pool basin or enclosure will immediately begin to exhibit chemical exposure symptoms. Safeguards are specific devices or design features associated with the chemical feeders that prevents the overfeeding of chemicals when there is no water flow through the circulation system. Wisconsin law states the feeders must be capable of performing accurate feeding, including anti-siphon safeguards, and be electrically interconnected with the circulation pump control circuit and have a separate disconnect switch. Accurate chemical feeding and safeguard requirements are also addressed in Wisconsin law that regulates the design and construction of public pools. Unlike the Health and Safety Code, state law also requires a flow sensor in addition to the electronic connection of the feeder and pump. A flow sensor is required if a pool facility has converted the disinfection system from erosion to liquid chlorine or if it was built after February 2009. Pools that do not meet these requirements are strongly encouraged to install a flow sensor because a chemical release will likely send people to the hospital. A flow sensor can sense when the flow of the water decreases or stops. When this happens, the flow sensor communicates to the chlorine and acid feeders to stop introducing chemicals. There are several types of disinfection feeders that are associated with pools, which include erosion feeders that use dichlor or trichlor within a cylindrical type feeder, erosion feeders with a booster pump that use calcium hypochlorite. There's also liquid chlorine and the less common gas chlorine. In this demonstration, we will focus on the liquid chlorine and acid feed systems, as the erosion feeder systems already have these safeguards in place. We will now demonstrate how a pool operator can perform specific steps to illustrate safeguards to prevent a chemical release are present and operational. To ensure the safety of the facility's staff, their guests, and the inspector, these steps must be performed by a knowledgeable pool operator and may be requested by the health and safety inspection staff. The pool operator will change the controller to a manual setting in order to feed chlorine. When this happens, a light on the controller will indicate when the chlorine is feeding. The controller will automatically turn the feeder on and it will begin to feed chemicals. While the chlorine feeder is on, the operator will close the valve of the flow sensor and you will notice the rotating paddle wheel will quickly stop. This event will alert the controller. Another type of flow sensor design includes the use of a magnetic bar that descends when the valve of the flow sensor is closed and water flow is lost. This event will alert the controller. Any other type of flow sensor that is used should produce the same end result where the controller is alerted of the loss of water flow and the chlorine feeder automatically is turned off. The pool operator will change the controller to a manual setting in order to feed chlorine. When this happens, a light on the controller will indicate when the chlorine is feeding. The controller will automatically turn the feeder on and it will begin to feed chemicals. While the chlorine feeder is on, the operator will turn off the power to the main recirculation pump. The loss of power creates a loss of water flow, which will then alert the controller. When there is an alert, the controller will produce an alarm light. 
or the entire screen display of the controller may also lose power. Either way, the end result should automatically turn the chlorine feeder off. Thank you for taking the time to understand the importance of safeguards and the steps you can take to protect and promote the health and safety of your pool patrons and your staff. If you have questions, please email DATCAP 